Hey there YouTube! Today we got a new saute pan. We like to make, you know, taco night, nacho night, where you've got full of ground beef in a big pan and you need a two-handed pan, you know, one of those with two handles here. So my wife did the research and found this here. We can look at the box. Cuisinart Chef's Classic Stainless Cookware five and a half quart saute pan. It comes with this ridiculously shiny lid. The nice thing here is that we've got a giant pan that we can cook in. The normal handle on one side and then the helper handle on the other side. So when it's really full, you can pour the grease out of the pan really easy. This is our first time with a stainless steel pan and they're different from non-stick pans. You've got to season them so your stuff doesn't stick and also you don't overcook your food. I actually had to do some research on how to treat these pans so when we use them so that way stuff doesn't stick to them. One of the things you do to take care of the pan is you don't use abrasives on your pan because that can scratch the metal and then food can stick in there. The other thing you need to do is season your pan and that took a little googling to find out what you're supposed to do for that but it's obviously you wash and dry it then you add oil or butter some greasy substance in there and and start heating it and you heat it for a couple minutes then you take it off the heat let it cool and you wipe off the excess and supposedly that oil builds up a layer on the metal to help your food not stick on there you can always google that if you need to but that's the procedure that i found this pan is actually sold listing several features one is the stainless steel which we've talked about and the thing with stainless steel is it's supposed to be corrosion resistant but it's also not magnetic so there's some question over whether a pan will work on an induction surface or not sometimes i see this particular pan listed as not working on induction surfaces. If you want to know the part number, the part number is 73330H. That's probably not important unless you're a pro and are trying to find these for a commercial kitchen. One of the things I found out for induction cooking is if you have a magnetic bottom here, that's how you tell if your pan will work for an induction surface or not. I got myself a magnet and hey, look at that. So that'll work. And it looks like even the side somewhat, the magnet sticks to. It's magnetic, should work on the induction surface. Uh, one of the things they talk about, I don't know how well this shows up on camera, but here there are measurements on the side of the pan and it shows you how much fluid space there is in the pan when you fill it. I can't tell if it's etched in, chemically etched in or if it's engraved or not, so I don't know how that'll hold up over time, if stuff will stick to it or not. That's one of the things, we'll have to see how that works out. Another thing that this is sold on is that it has an aluminum core. It actually has like a um, sandwich of different metals for the bottom here, which is probably to enhance the magnetic ability for induction. You've also got an aluminum core underneath to help thermally distribute the heat so that way you heat inside the pan easier. That'll be something that'll be interesting to see. It says the handle is designed for extra cooling so when you pick it up it will be cool even if the pan is super hot. Now if you put this in the oven, this is also sold as oven safe, so if you put this in the oven, yeah, the, the handle's gonna get hot. Just use pot holders if you put this thing in the oven. And then the last thing that they market this for is the curvature of the lip here. I don't know how well you can see how curved it is, but that taper on there, is supposed to make it so that way it pours better. When we test this, we'll see how this works out and we'll be able to report more. And unfortunately, it looks like we got a dent in here when it got shipped to us. So that might be something to be aware of if you end up buying it from Amazon like we did. I don't think that, that's not gonna be a deal killer for us, but that's just something to be aware of as well. Putting some butter in, that's what we're using for our oil to season it with, and we put it on medium low heat. We're gonna get that heated up and spread about the pan. All right, we got that thoroughly melted and all around the pan. So what we're gonna do is take this off the heat and let it cool for a bit. The last of the procedure for seasoning this pan is just wipe it out with a paper towel, get the excess butter off, and there should be a nice layer of butter to prevent food from sticking to the pan. All right, I've been browning a couple of pounds of ground beef, few minutes. It's browning really nicely, really evenly. You can see how, how well the, the meat's moving around here. 
Obviously on the edges there, it's a little pinker, basically off of the burner. However, it is browning very, very nicely everywhere else. I'm not having to stir it much like with our older skillet, supposedly nonstick, that has a, a bow in the base. So I really like this flat pan. And again, this is moving beautifully here. Nothing is sticking as so often happens with beef. When we got this, one of us noticed that the description says that this little lip here on the skillet is actually supposed to help with have less mess. Didn't really figure it would be the case, but I just dumped out the ground beef into a, a strainer to get the grease off and grabbed a washcloth to wipe off the side as I'm so used to having to do on my pans. But as you can see, there is absolutely no grease there on the side. There is on the lip right there where I poured it, but nothing on the side. So that is beautiful. I mean, it's a little thing, but that is awesome. Got the pan out of the washer after it's been cleaned. Picked up quite a few water spots that has to do really with our water chemistry. That's just unfortunate for us. I don't know if you can see it, but we got spots in here. I don't know if that's from the seasoning process or stuff that just wouldn't come off when I try to clean it. That's the, our result. So this is gonna take some more work for me to try to figure out how to maintain this pretty. Not so easy is just wipe it clean although the stuff inside did come off pretty easy we do just have those extra spots which they're not gonna hurt anything they're just cosmetic and could be frustrating if we're trying to be make things pretty for like Thanksgiving or something like that 